You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring scripture with Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom and Dr. Frederick J. Long. Welcome and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Proof Text. I am Michael Halcom, and in this episode, we're going to be dealing with this week's fallacy. This is a new series that I've started up. There's lots of bad logic, fallacious thinking out there. And I wanted to introduce a segment on the podcast to maybe introduce you to uh, some uh, names of these fallacies and to show some examples of them floating around so that you can spot them um, and you can work your way through them and uh, identify what's going on and whatnot. Let me remind you that uh, during this first week of June 2023, also that we have... um, a uh, a book giveaway going on. So there are three books that we're giving away. You can watch the first episode of this week. Uh, go back in the podcast and find that to learn about how you can win those books. Uh, another thing I want to remind you of is this week we are starting to uh, move the podcast to 10 episodes a week rather than just seven. So uh, now on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we will have two episodes, and on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, we'll just have one episode. So we're growing the podcast, which is exciting. So when you see multiple episodes uh, show up in your podcast app or wherever you find your podcast, remember that we're going, uh, we're moving beyond seven uh, episodes a week. We're going to ten now. So that's a good thing. So uh, one of the uh, things that are uh, the, the fallacy that I want to show you this week comes from. Uh, a man named John Cooper. And let me just show you a little bit of uh, John Cooper stuff. Uh, he's on Twitter. That's where I saw this. Uh, John Cooper is the uh, um, the ex-national finance chair of draft uh, Biden, or he still is. Um, he worked for Barack Obama, the majority leader of Suffolk County Legislature, and the gay dad. Of five kids. He graduated from Duke and he's flying his pride thing um, up there for all, rights for all, it says. And uh, one of the tweets that Cooper put out, this was on May 25th. I screenshotted it. And this is what I want to focus on for the fallacy of the week. Um, Now, the fallacy of the week doesn't have to uh, mean that the fallacy happened this week, right? Uh, It's just a fallacy this week on the podcast, this week's podcast episodes that I want to discuss. So John Cooper on May 25th, 2023, uh, tweeted this. Uh, He's hashtag pride, and I'm showing an image here if you're just listening. Hashtag pride followed by a rainbow symbol. And then there's a picture. And it has someone crying. Um, and the person has a Make America Great Again hat on, so a MAGA hat on, and they're rubbing their eyes crying. And the text that Cooper has above the image says this, calls everyone else a snowflake, can't handle walking into a target without having a mental breakdown over a rainbow. So again, he starts this by saying, hashtag pride rainbow, Got a picture of a guy wearing a MAGA hat crying. Calls everyone else a snowflake. Can't handle walking into Target without having a mental breakdown over a rainbow. Now, there are so many fallacies here. I'm going to point out a few. I'm going to highlight a few. Um, really, a lot of this just falls under the idea of a straw man fallacy. So he's going to set up his opponent, his false opponent, and then construct that opponent however he likes, and then knock it down, which makes him sort of a hero. That's the straw man. Um, That's what he's done here. So he's got this picture of someone crying and it looks like maybe a photoshopped MAGA hat on them. So this image of a crybaby. So what he's done is in the straw man, he's set up his opponent as a crybaby. Meanwhile, he's smiling. He's got his tie and suit on and he looks He's making, he's presenting himself as uh, business-like and formal and proper. And so really, even without words here, we 
we have the straw man already being set up in images. We have the formal guy in a suit and tie that you're supposed to take care of. And then you have the crybaby. And the crybaby here is, again, wearing a MAGA hat. So someone who supports Trump, who is representative of uh, all Trump supporters. All right. So not only is he going to knock down this one Trump supporter, but he's setting it up where this character in this picture is representative of all Trump supporters. And in one tweet, Mr. Cooper uh, supposedly has knocked all the MAGA people down. So it's a straw man, obviously. Um, I haven't seen uh, one uh, person who's voted for Trump looking or acting like this, first of all. Uh, I know many people who voted for Trump, um, and I've never seen a single one of them uh, with this disposition. So this is a straw man. He's just set up this image and... Uh, he's trying to knock it down to make himself look like a hero. He's trying to be funny, but there's so many logical fallacies uh, here that it's it's actually not funny at all. Um, so the second thing that we have going on here is he says, calls everyone else a snowflake. Okay, so again, I don't know a single MAGA person who calls everyone else a snowflake. Clearly, there's a fallacy of exaggeration here. Right. And you also have a, a group. Uh, it's called group fallacy, where you're um, using one person to sort of represent a group. There are other names for this sort of fallacy as well. Um, but you're using one person to sort of group everybody together. And um, that's a fallacy in and of itself, because um, there is no like one person that's representative of every person who's MAGA or who voted for Trump or who believes in the slogan, make America great again, or even wears a MAGA hat. There's no one person that reflects every single person in that demographic of people. So that's a fallacy as well. You have um, an exaggeration going on and you have a group fallacy as well. And he says, can't handle walking into a target without having a mental breakdown. Well, uh, I've seen lots of um, uh, people walk into targets and not have a mental breakdown. I personally know people who voted for Trump that walked into target and didn't have a mental breakdown. Um, and also, so, uh, what we have going on here again is in a sort of, um, uh, an ad hom fallacy. It's, it's he's attacking, uh, the person, right? Uh, that's what it means to the person or to the man. So now he's going to that person to make fun of him, calls everyone else a snowflake, can't handle walking into a target without having a mental breakdown over a rainbow. So he's, he's making fun now. And what's really disturbing about this is that, let's say just this were true. I, I remember going to a, a conference of theologians and Bible scholars of over 10,000 people years ago uh, when right after Trump won the election and literally grown adults, people with PhDs were standing in the lobby crying on one another's shoulders. So I had seen um, the other side actually doing this and they had to create safe spaces at this conference for 10,000 adults. Right. Um, but anyways, let's just say that someone did have a mental breakdown over this. Well, this guy's a politician, isn't he? Shouldn't he have compassion for people, especially people with mental illnesses or mental having mental breakdowns, anxiety disorders? Yeah, politics can do that to people. But rather than make fun of them, Mr. Cooper, isn't it your job to serve the people and protect them, even if they're not on your side of the aisle? This is horrible. He's actually he's actually making a joke that. Uh, victimizes uh, people with who have anxiety issues and mental breakdowns. I don't think it's funny at all. Um, and so this is actually a, a red herring as well. Um, he's, he's got that fallacy going on. Um, and he's, he's actually making 
the argument about something that the the lack of support for Target isn't about. People who are boycotting Target aren't boycotting over a rainbow. Target hasn't lost billions of dollars in the last few weeks over the rainbow. The rainbow's been in there for years and years and years. Why people are boycotting Target right now at this moment in history is because Target has aggressively been marketing um, pride stuff to children, especially trans stuff with the uh, swimsuits and this sort of thing and, and the onesies and the kids clothing. Yeah, so the issue isn't about a rainbow. The issue is about the safety uh, of our kids. The issue is about the target targeting our kids with their marketing. So it's a red herring to say it's having a mental breakdown over a rainbow. No, it's not. Uh, people are boycotting target over uh, kids being targeted. And just because they're boycotting doesn't mean they're having a mental breakdown. And again, if they were, how about Mr. Politician, you have compassion for them rather than make fun of them and kick them while they're down. Um, there's another, uh, by the way, we could also uh, look at the fallacy known as um, the ignorance of refutation. You can Google that and look into that. Um, but the last point that I want to make here um, is the, the self-contradiction fallacy. Mr. Cooper, as I said, is in a suit and tie, and he's got himself looking clean cut, and he's smiling, and he's a politician, and uh, he's got his hashtag pride. But is he really, should he really be proud of making fun of people, first of all? And second of all, possibly making fun of people in a way that uh, those with anxiety disorders uh, <laughs> are, are made fun of? Like, should he be making fun of that as as a politician? Like, is that something to be proud of? I don't think so. Uh, there's a lack of pride going on there. So there's this self-contradiction uh, fallacy taking place where he's making himself look like a proud person and, and, and um, advocating pride when he does something that no one should be proud of. Right, making fun uh, in this way, exaggerating, characterizing whole groups of people, um, and creating straw man arguments, and so on and so forth. So, this is our fallacy of the week. And I get it. People will say it's just a joke. Maybe you should laugh about it. Uh, I know that's where people are going to come from, but I don't find anything funny about it. Knowing people with anxiety disorders and uh, things like that. I don't find anything funny about this. And I don't find anything uh, that in here that anyone should be proud of, much less a politician. So yeah, there's our fallacy or fallacies uh, all in one post of the week. And I should say um, a lot of times, um, if not most of the times, memes are fallacies. And sometimes that is what makes them funny. But in this case, uh, that does not make this funny. And so I hope uh, this was helpful to you and uh, keep watching, subscribe to Proof Text, follow us and uh, we're, we'll be on, we're on YouTube, we're on your uh, a variety, dozens of podcasts, networks and apps. And so follow us, like, share, um, wherever you're at, whatever platform you're on, we'd really, really appreciate that. And we hope that you'll keep listening to Proof Text and remember, we're going to 10 episodes this week. All right, take care. I hope that helps. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glow's House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glowsahouse.com today. Glow's House, language resources for the global community.